Welcome back to the Big CNC series part 3 and you can see no CNC around because we are on the boat that I spoke about in the end of part 2. This is part 3 and the first project for the Big CNC is to make new floor plates for this boat. It makes sense to do this on the CNC because all of these shapes are really wonky and not really rectangular and uh, these old floor plates are really used up and at the end of their lifetime. Let me show you. So this is one of the floor plates and it's really thin and I think the glue has given up, the fibers have given up over time and it's stretchy, bendy and doesn't really support uh, a human unless you step on these ribs. Let me show you how broken this floor actually is. And there is even a clear crack here, you can see that there. So all of this has to go out. That's the reason why we need to renew them and let's get right to it and check all the measurements and the 3D files for this new floor and then we're going to go to Carlos and cut them. Can you take it out? Okay, awesome. 534. This is 535 here. I have 633 and 280. And uh, Good, we're done with that part. We can put it back and do the next one. Awesome. So, so floor number four is the one that has the... No, we didn't. And after that one, I'll go to the <clears throat> 541, but yeah. Yeah, then the hole should be 67 deep. 245 is this. Yeah. 245. and 305 is the... Yeah, 303, 305, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, so this fits, yes? Yeah. Okay. I believe we need to take off the ladder, don't we? Yeah. Okay, and this goes as well. Perfect, 547. Uh, 199 at the bottom. Yep, okay, but this looks good, yes? Yeah. Let's put it back in then. Yes. Just take it out, let's check the measurements, and, and, and then like think about, about, about it. It's 434, but that's, I guess, fine. It's 411 that is the correct one. Uh, uh, push it like to the like kind of uh, side, like because this is how it's supposed to be. Yes. And and and, and, and so we should make it like slightly longer. Look at the uh, crack at the middle. And now I see how much we we need to add into the four three three. So we ma make these two lines now parallel. Yeah. So we have more space on this girder thingy. Yeah. And this is our actual end. Yeah, because like kind of as you can see, I actually drew the like straight line in there. Four two four was the top that we checked. Now you pull out the piece. And I uh, check the four two four again. That end is not a rectangular. Four two four. Yes. What did you say? What what is that supposed to be? Uh, six five eight. Yeah, okay. six five eight is line or. This gonna give us some air. That 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 looks good shown to me. <coughs> yeah. Hundred point one. But I guess that's fine. That's yeah. it'll fit. Hold your laptop. So you wanted a hole there, yes? Yes. Okay. I think we are done now with the checking and measuring and adjusting. My initial measurements were uh, more or less uh, correct. Um, uh, we only needed to um, move them a few millimeters here and there and then um, 
remove some fuck ups uh, from the originals. <laughs> Suski already made a great job of preparing all of these um, parts in a virtual fashion. And uh, now we just checked all the angles and measurements and did some sanity checking. And we are now confident that we can cut this, I think. So let's um, jump to Kados and throw these parts on the big CNC. <laughs> We use the machine to mark the locations where we can put screws safely. And now we can start to cut out the floor for the sailboat. This whole job took uh, 1 hour and 15 minutes and the video you are seeing right now is being replayed at uh, 15 times speed but I also cut out some boring bits. Here you can see that all the screws we use to hold down the part are actually in between the parts and not a single screw is inside one of our parts or has been touched by the mill bit. This is why we use the CNC to mark the exact position of all the screws. Work holding is a complicated and interesting topic in regards to CNC mills. As you can see, we left little tabs standing between the sheet and the parts. And these tabs are there to hold the parts properly in place. And right now we are cutting them off with hand saws, which is fairly quick and easy. We had a little bit of tear out to deal with and this tear out is being sanded right now by Suski. On this evening in the workshop I couldn't make it and uh, couldn't help her with this step, but I handed her a GoPro so you can see something anyway. The tear out on some of the edges left small holes and Suski didn't want to have them on the boat. So she's using a filler paste to fill these uh, little holes in the surface. The excess wood filler needs to be sanded off. Actually, I wanted to show you how the parts are being painted, but I messed up. I gave Suski a GoPro to film the sanding and wood filling and painting, but I didn't form it the SD card. So all the material from onboard Curiosity, where we measured the floor pads, were still on the SD card and it was full fairly quickly. So the camera stopped recording before the painting actually started. And this is how the painted floorboards look like. Let's go back on the sailboat to install the floorboards. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it on that day, so it's just Suski who's doing the installing and trimming of the floorboards. 
So we're cutting the new floor pieces. As we can see, we have one piece that doesn't fit. Because while planning, I didn't understand the form of the right side correctly. The last bit of it is straight and I have a small curvature in there. So now I need to go in and make this part straight. As we can see from here, this is the amount of error we have at the moment. The piece has been trimmed to exactly the correct size. Now we just need to transfer this amount of deductions into the 3D model. So the floor, it fits. From all of these five pieces that are the major floorboard, um, two of them were not of correct size. In this piece, which was the piece number three, um, I needed to straighten the line from here to here and then remove a bit of here so that it actually like fits in here. And then I needed to round the corner because this is like nice and curved. Then in our piece number two, I needed to shorten it a bit because in here we had one centimeter too much and here we here had half a centimeter too much. So, but now in total, I have a nice new fancy fitting floor. This is how it looks under the floor. So this is the old floor and we've made a new piece for here. Let me put this one in. And this is how the new floor looks. Yes, and actually I wanted to show you how we replaced the whole floor. But uh, as this boat has to sail every weekend, the new floor was already put in. So I tried to fake it and remove the carpet that is already on here. But as you can see, it sticks already to the new floor. So I can't even fake putting in the new floor. Um, so you have to live with not seeing how we put in the new floor but trust me it's underneath here and it's beautiful and has no problems whatsoever it doesn't creak it doesn't move it's very sturdy and stable and i believe the owner over there is super happy with it i love it let's set sail and i'll um and when we're on the water i'll explain a bit how the whole process with the big CNC went and um, what my feeling about it was and what went well, what went not well and whether I can recommend to buy a huge CNC in China. See you on the water. This is the end of uh, part three of this huge big C and C adventure, I shall call it. Um, and I think I should use the opportunity to being on this lovely sailboat uh, to give a bit of a summary uh, result. What went well, what, what didn't went well. Um, all in all, I think the price made all the hardship on the way worth it. The price was really cheap. I didn't expect it that I could get a CNC of that size for such a, a cheap price. And this is still too loud. Uh, I didn't expect that I could have gotten a CNC uh, for such a cheap price, but there were also some hardships and I can't recommend it for a starter. You should have operated CNCs and you should have made a CNC from scratch before uh, I would recommend doing it this way, getting a cheap one from China. I have no clue whether you can actually understand me because the wind is so heavy, but we'll find out in post-production. So what went wrong? Oh yeah, um, we, we had a three week delay because uh, there, there was an issue with the motor driver. That there was a cable loose and there were parameters set wrong. So there was no chance that this thing could run just off the bat from China. Both things had to be fixed first before the spindle could turn for the first time. Um, I didn't film it, but uh, there was one of the six machine feet 
uh, had the wrong thread, so I had to drill open the thread and cut a new thread on the inside. I was a bit disappointed that the manufacturer didn't include any switches or cabling for the auxiliary device that I ordered, which was a dust suction unit and a vacuum pump unit. I would have thought that the manufacturer includes switches in the big switching cabinet. Unfortunately, they didn't. So I had to have an electrician come out and do that for me. Thanks, Ego, for hooking that uh, stuff up. That was amazing. Uh, some accessories uh, wasn't uh, wasn't part of the delivery. There were yeah, 25 collets missing. There were um, parts missing to hook up the dust suction to the machine and to do proper management of the tubes. But that's okay. We could have we found some bits and bobs and wires and uh, uh, duct tape and we made something work. There is no documentation whatsoever if you buy a machine from China. You have to know what it does, you have to know every component before you do it. And right now I'm still um, not sure where to put loop, where to put oil, how much, um, how much and how often I should maintain what parts. I have no clue about that. Time will tell and we need to keep a good eye on it. All in all, this machine costs roughly nine and a half thousand US dollars, uh, just under five the machine itself in China, and then four and a half for uh, shipping and the container and the ship and port usage fees and crane usage fees and renting a forklift and all of these little uh, steps that add up. And obviously things that we needed to buy as well were missing. Um, like, uh, yeah, the ER25 collet set. Eventually I got that set from the manufacturer delivered but I have to say, you have to know what you're doing to order such a machine from China and expect no documentation or manuals whatsoever. The huge box in which it came was damaged uh, and not only a little. Uh, it was barely okay. The machine wasn't damaged itself, but I think if the transport would have been longer or more complex, then there would have been a danger that the machine itself would have been damaged. Uh, we are lucky that this didn't happen, um, but I think the manufacturer could improve the packaging of such huge machines. Um, all of these costs were covered by Cardus and all of the work that went into uh, getting this machine there and setting it up was uh, done for free uh, as voluntary work. Cardus is an organization that builds and operates, maintains and designs uh, mobile hospitals for crisis and war regions and uh, they need machines to build uh, such mobile hospitals and crisis and war regions. If you like to uh, help them do this and offset the costs of this expensive uh, new machine, then please donate and there is a link to do that right below in the description uh, for the Better Place page. Yeah, um, the new floor of the boat is beautiful and works really well. We are super happy and this concludes part three of the Big CNC series. Thank you for watching.